What is up, y'all? Happy Thursday. Welcome back to another Adobe Live. My name is Idara Akpo. I am going to be your host for the day, and I am joined with fine art and fashion photographer Elena today again. So, Elena, how are you doing today on stage? Hi, two? Dara. <laughs> Hi, guys. I'm very happy to be joining you for another day of uh, Photoshop tutorials. Yes. Yeah. Yesterday was so much fun. So if y'all missed the yeah. recap, the broadcast from yesterday, make sure you head over to YouTube and I'll show be hand so that way you can watch that recap. And before we go ahead and get started, I want to give you all some quick reminders to start your day with the Photoshop Creative Challenges hosted by Voodoo Val every weekday at 9 a.m. Pacific. You want to make sure that you tune in and challenge yourself with a new prompt each day. So I know I'm going to be tuning in, so I hope that y'all are. And then also, if you missed the Adobe Font stream this morning, do not worry. That is okay. You can check out the replay on YouTube or Behance. And now speaking of YouTube and Behance, if you are over on YouTube land or if you're over here on Behance, welcome. Hello. Really excited to have y'all here with us. If you have any questions that you want to drop in the chat, let us know where you are joining from. I am calling from Phoenix, Arizona. Let us know in the chat. That way we can kind of engage and talk to y'all throughout the stream. Awesome. So Elena, if you can yes. go ahead and introduce yourself again um, and just talk yeah. about yourself, your work and what we'll be doing today. All right. Um, hey guys, um, for those joining us today, I am an international fashion portrait and fine art photographer. I used to live in the States, but now I live in Cyprus. It's a Mediterranean island uh, next to Greece. I do a lot of commission work for uh, fashion brands and various companies from, from across the globe, uh, even as far as Australia. And um, I also do a lot of uh, personal fine art work, uh, particularly series, which I exhibit. And I'm going to take you there now because today we will be talking about fine art series and, and what we need to do with that. Um, and just take you through a few. This one is called um, uh, The uh, Last Days of Sarah, and it's about the struggle of the, uh, you know, transgender population and this actually this series was uh won the 17th Pollux awards and the new york photography awards 2021 and it will be exhibited in barcelona spain in october at the photo nostrum gallery after helmut newton and stephen mccurry wow. so yeah it, it's the same gallery so i'm pretty excited about that um and uh I do, you know, uh, a lot of my series have color. I love color. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's very conceptual. I start with a basic idea and I write it down like a, mm -hmm. like directing a movie almost every scene, beginning, the end. Mm -hmm. And in my, I also write down what kind of like color I'm going for, the, the color combinations, because they all have to have um, the same, you know, they have to have uniformity. Yeah. This is stunning. Thank you. I am. I, I love pastels. <laughs> um, I, I, I love bright colors as well, but I love pastels especially. Now I'm just going to go into what we're going to do today. Mm -hmm. It's a series called um, Hindering Narcissus. And um, the series is actually debuted yesterday on Vault, which is a, um, a new digital art platform. So I am one of the four artists that they're launching this with, and uh, a portion of the proceeds will be going to the World Food Program for uh, Ukraine. Wow. So yeah, this is some fine art. Okay. And awesome. uh, I think that's enough for now. Awesome. And we can, I just want to start, 
you know, going to Photoshop because, you know, we have a lot of work and my <laughs> process, you know, Idara knows from yesterday. <laughs> I do take it slow because I just, I do a lot of work for, you know, I, I print big prints. My work often ends up, you know, in billboards. So I want to get the minor details. So my process might take actually quite a bit of time. So let, let's jump into, I, I just brought in one image. I didn't bring all of them mm -hmm. because the process will be the same for all of the images you just saw, right? Perfect. So I'm going to show you, this is the finished work and I'm going to show you how we started. Wow. Yeah. Um, first, the lighting. I just want to spend a minute on the lighting because it's it's important on because it's, it's how I conceptualized it. I wanted it to be very soft and be a little shadowy uh, on one side, mm -hmm. almost like, you know, it was a window light. If you were to have a window, uh, um, very uh, soft, as you can see, was a large octa box that I used. And uh, it was the exact same setup for all of the shots. Mm -hmm. And uh, up here on the left, I used uh, some V flats. I don't know what, you know what mm -hmm. that is, right? Is yes. it the V flats yes. to bounce the light. All right. The first thing that I do, obviously, you know, this is not a raw uh, image anymore. It's a TIFF file. But I take the raw images into camera raw and I do very basic uh, light universal uh, changes to it. So in this case, all I did really, uh, honestly, it was just um, the color balance. Mm -hmm. I brought it, I, I cooled it down and I introduced more cyan. That was it. Literally, you know, I, I didn't need to do anything more. Um, so as we go in, I'm actually going to go back into uh, camera raw. Okay. And yeah, even sharpening was fine. Um, the only thing uh, as we now, uh, what I want to do, let me just move this away. Uh, I left this intentionally. You see the blanket. Mm -hmm. It has the color. Uh, some cyan go transferred into the whites, right? Mm -hmm. So I just want to quickly fix that with a uh, hue, saturation and luminance. Um, I'm clicking on the picker right? And I'm in saturation and I'm going here and I'm going to completely desaturate it. Of course, in doing so, I desaturated the background, but that's fine. And I'm, I'm going back into um, uh, Photoshop. The good thing with this image is that it's very clean, right? Yeah. Background and the image. So it's very easy to cut. I have no problem with that. So I'm, what I'm going to do is um, take the quick selection tool, and I'm just gonna select the blanket, right? Mm -hmm. And if you all have any questions yes, please um, throughout the chat, please ask them in the chat box. That way we can make sure that we get all of them answered throughout the live. Oopsie. All right, that's it. So basically, now that I've selected it, I'm on the background, uh, I'm on the second copy that I did, right? Mm -hmm. All I'm going to do is add a mask. And that's it. What it did is just it left everything as it was mm -hmm. before. And it just, you know, turned the blanket back into pure white. Perfect. All right, that's it. That's all I needed. So all I'm going to do is um, shift option command E to make a new uh, background. I'm just going to delete that because I didn't do really anything and I'm going to rename it background. Okay. So the next step is to fix that hair, right? You see some hair yep. here and here. Again, it's very easy um, because the background is very clean. But I actually wanted to take this opportunity to kind of go through the other way. So what if you wanted to select all the hair for mm -hmm. another project, right? To transfer it into a different background. I know that is a difficult subject for many people. <laughs> you know, it just hair is uh, used to be the bane of our existence. 
right? We used to spend a lot of time trying to, to choose the, the, the hair. So let's see what uh, Photoshop can do, right? Perfect. And then there's one question here for you. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody asked, how do you get that photo? Um, how do you get that photo to look like a painting? So I guess already it looks very, it looks like a painting. <laughs> it looks like a painting already. I'm assuming that has a lot to do with your lighting setup or. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, lighting is my thing. You know, I just, I spend a lot of time on, on, uh, on the lighting and posing my subjects, mm -hmm. you know, lots of time. I mean, this was actually my daughter. So oh, wow. yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I did it during lockdown, you know, so I had time and I was like, do this, do that. Um, we had gone across the street to a, a, a woodsy area and I saw the flowers and, and the whole series was, you know, born out of that, just from walking into the woods. Anyway, so yes, I have a, this series is, a, is about a painterly technique. You see that, right? So that's what we're going to learn how to to achieve that don't worry you're gonna go step by step, step okay by step. Hmm. but now let's just learn how to refine hair right how to choose hair let's go to the select and just you can really choose anything right and uh you know what the screen i'll put it back up here okay and let's click select subject so it does a pretty decent job selecting the subject, but it's not perfect. Mm -hmm. So we're going to click up here. Can you guys see that? Because my yes. screen sharing is in the middle. Okay. Yes. It says select and mask, right? Mm -hmm. Now in, in the later versions of Adobe, we have this tool here called refine hair. So let's click it to see what it does. Now, to be honest with you, I actually most of the times I don't use it because what it does, it comes and takes um, color from inside the hair. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it works, but in this case, you know, it, it, you see that? Can yeah. I do again? You yes. see, this, yes. this was very yes. fine. You see yes. that it took that in. If you're not careful, you're not going to see that. Yep. So I'm putting it back. Okay. And what we're going to do is just... Uh, Let's use the refine edge tool. I'm going to click on the smart radius just pull it up a little bit and just around the edges, right? I'm just going to click and, you know, Photoshop will just add the edges. Mm. And I think when you, um, I'm going to use the brush tool to bring in, you see here. Yeah. It, we lost a little bit of that. Um, the uh, the eyelashes, you see, guys, over mm. here. It, it so right. It brings it back a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Although I really don't care because any anything that it does with the face and the blanket that's easily fixable. Because as I said, I can just select and and yep. keep it, uh, yeah uh, all i'm concerned with is the hair so i don't know if you can see how it adds it back yes and i can see it hopefully everyone yeah can. i mean it did a pretty good job here so yeah. I'm, I'm pretty satisfied right um a little bit here, it just messed up the blankie. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I think that's it. Uh, what we're going to do here, it, it, let's go to output settings, right? Click on decontaminate colors and just pay attention around here now as I do this, right? You see that? Mm, yep. What it does is it differentiates the edges yeah it puts black more color so we're gonna choose output to new layer with layer mask and let's click okay obviously our background here is the same right so you're mm -hmm. not gonna see anything so what i'm gonna do i am going to go to the adjustment panel choose solid color and choose a really like horrible color to mm -hmm. put it against so you can see right it did a pretty good job with selecting it, right? Yes, it did a really um, great job of that. Yeah. 
I have another tip though, in case, you know, for your image, you didn't do a, a good job. Um, well, two tips actually. All right. So you see the, the layer mask here? Um, yes. I am going to press the Alt Option key and click into the mask, okay? And here you can see um, some of the uh, very small imperfections. Mm -hmm. You see here how a little bit of the black was taken away? I have a very cool thing for you guys. Take the brush and instead of the mode to normal, switch it to overlay, mm. okay? And make sure the color is white. What this does, it protects everything that's white. So here's what I'm gonna do, look. Oh, wow. It doesn't go outside. How cool is that? So you oh, can wow. fix anything, right? Look. And it just doesn't, it protects all the, oh. all the um, uh, white. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, if you wanted to do the opposite, you switch it to black, right? Mm -hmm. And let's say you wanted to get rid of this fine hair, you see? Mm -hmm. But then it doesn't go into the white. Oh, wow. So this is a better tool when you want to refine your mask. So I'm just going to go back to it okay um well, what did i do i went all the way back <laughs> all, all the way back Jeez. all right no harm done and then there's another question oh. of asking and i think you explained this but if you can explain it one mm. more time what lighting did you use for this photo um an octabox to the left of the model above. Guys, you can always see from the catch light, mm -hmm. right? In the eyes. Always learn to uh to to no just just notice the eyes, right? It's you see that here? So yeah. that means the light was placed somewhere here. And in the back, as I mentioned, I use V flats. Mm -hmm. What are V flats for those that don't know? It's like a let's say two cardboard pieces. Mm -hmm. They're white. Okay. And we often use them when we want to reflect light back into the subject, but we want, we don't want the source to be isolated. We want it to bounce pretty much everywhere mm -hmm. to cover a large area. So that's what I used. Okay. So I have another tip here for the hair before we move on. Um, if you're not happy, let's say that, and you want more diffringing, so more color put into the stray hair that you brought back, all you have to do is duplicate the layer. So watch as I'm duplicating. Oh, wow. Voila, voila. what happened? We filled it with more hair. Isn't that cool? No, oh, wow. Yeah, so damn near perfect man <laughs> <laughs> anyway are we done with this because i want to move to what i did for this yeah. one I just wanted, this was a a little trick so i'm gonna just delete this you guys right and i'm just gonna show you right away how i just fixed the hair right it was easy all you have to do is and let's just see i chose the subject right mm -hmm. let's see it's selecting all right i mean i have it picked okay so i selected this and then i clear i cleaned up the selection a little bit you mm -hmm. know you can do that with the lasso tool right let's mm -hmm. say here you see a little bit of a selection here um click the alt option as you're um, on with the lasso tool and just do this right and it's removed okay mm -hmm. cool right so let's go back to the quick selection i'm holding the shift key to add to the selection right um i don't care much about again the face because it's the hair that i want all i did guys was that um i made this selection um a little bit smoother actually a lot smoother around 40 because <laughs> I just you know I wanted I don't want I didn't want any hair at all yeah so all I did I clicked okay and then 
Command Shift I inverts the selection, right? Mm -hmm. So now what is selected? My background. So I went and I took the brush and I sampled from the the, the, the cyan that is here, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I created a new layer, right? And I just, you know, sorry. It's, yeah, I it's said too hard. So mm -hmm. yeah, and I just, you know, paint it away. You see uh, here, I would sample this area, let's say, and I would just paint away, blah, 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 blah. I don't know what that happened over there, but you get my point, mm -hmm. right? So that's, that's all I did. And just then manually, then just, I went and refined it a little bit, you know? So there wasn't a big deal to this, as I said, because the, uh, the background is simple. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, let's see. Ah, what did I do? What did I do? Right. That's it. Oh, I had this clicked. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, let me see. And then there's one more question back to the lighting. What size of an <laughs> Octabox did you use? Is it around 120 to 180? Yeah, and mine is about, uh, let me think, because I have two. Which one did I use? Yeah, I, I used my uh, extra large one, which is about 180. Okay. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, that is what I did. All right. Okay. <laughs> Right. So let's ref let, let's fix the hair a little bit more. You know, I don't like this area here. Right. And maybe I want to fix this area. So I created an empty layer. I took my clone tool. I'm, ha I'm happy people are asking about my light, which is <laughs> liked. They like the image to begin with. Right. Yes. Yes. So it's not a, just about Photoshop, right? Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Um, and here, I'm just gonna copy a little bit here, just to fill that in a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not too much because then she's gonna look like she's wearing a toupee <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> mm. just enough just enough i mean we all have uneven hairlines right mm -hmm. not it's not a fashion shoot where you know it has to be 100 percent perfect but we'll fix it more later i got something more going on here so yeah that's i think that's about it okay mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that was yeah actually this is what my okay mm -hmm. um, yeah i revert back to what i did you know i have it saved to what it was okay now are we okay with the hair i think for now I, we're okay i think for now we're good that looks it's really fun. nice all yeah. right um, I am going yesterday for you guys that are joining us again today, we went through frequency separation, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it again today, but I'm not going to go through the same uh, extent at all. Because yeah. first of all, this is a child and the skin is pretty awesome to begin with, right? Um, but I'm also, I'm going to use the frequency separation for the hair because mm -hmm. I want, yeah, yeah, I don't, you know, it, it is good sometimes to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't often, I have to say that okay. because when I do my fashion, uh, it, it's not really for uh, fashion shoots, but we're in fine art. So mm -hmm. in art, we perfect everything, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm allowed to do that here. Um, so let me just create a new layer. And then from that, I'm going to create two more layers. Uh, one I'm going to name low frequency. Idara, do you want me to explain again the whole thing for? Uh, oh. I mean, I don't think we need to. I think, again, if you, um, if we could, we did all of this explanation yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. yeah well, it was, uh, explain it, um, I think that's fine. Okay. Low frequency, we said, is for tonality, is for color. Mm -hmm. And the high frequency 
frequencies for the texture. So we're trying to strike a balance between the two. And when we work on low frequency, we're not affecting the textures and vice versa. Mm -hmm. so I'm going to, I'm in the low frequency layer. I'm going to choose blur, Gaussian blur. And again, you know, I use about, I use, let me zoom in. Oopsie. I'm going to go to the lashes and I stop right about where, you know, I stop seeing the lashes mm -hmm. and I click OK. I go to the high frequency image, apply image. Uh, let's choose the low frequency. OK, sorry. You know what? Because I have another one here. So we're going to get confused. Cancel. Low frequency two. There we go. That's what happens when you have way too many. <laughs> way at least too you many. label them. At least you're labeling them. Uh -huh. All right. Here it was. You see, because I had another one here and I'm like, which one do I choose? Mm -hmm. All right. Low frequency two. We're going to invert and the blending mode set it to add. Oops, dude. Hello, high frequency image. Apply image, invert the low frequency to set it to at scale to opacity 100%. Click OK. Let's choose linear light. And yesterday, remember, I mentioned that I create another layer, right, of high frequency for um, the... Um, uh, and I do saturation at 20. Uh, however, I want you to notice something. And I don't know if you can see that. Do you see that, Idara, that he created artifacts on the background? I can't really no. see it on my end. Um, it did. <laughs> <laughs> it did. Uh, let me zoom in. You see that? You see this? And there's differences in color. Okay, okay, I see it now. Yeah. I see it now. Okay, okay I am, I'm going to um, group this so that you can see that. Okay, Command G. Look before, mm -hmm. after. Do you see that? Yeah, I see that now. Okay, I mean, for me, it's not a big deal because I'm going to add a texture and I'm going to, you know, put leaves and, and stuff on top of that. But that's no excuse for allowing, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so what what am I what am I gonna do? That's very easy because anything that I apply pertains just to the skin and the hair, right? Mm -hmm. So what do I do? I'm just gonna go choose the subject, right? Um, actually, Control Z because I want you want. Yes, I wanted the, uh, which I deleted. So I'm gonna, it's, I deleted the layer for some reason. Okay, so I'm gonna do, again, select subject, right? Mm -hmm. And now all I'm gonna do is just add a layer mask to the frequency group. There so you go. see now all the problems got fixed because we're just gonna be working only on the hair and the skin. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go inside that. And uh, okay, we can do yesterday, we talked about using the lasso tool real quick, you know, to make the skin more uniform, right? I mean, there's shadows here that I don't necessarily want. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur, three times. We said what was used before, so mm -hmm. that would be around 27. Uh, you make sure your lasso is feathered. Mm -hmm. You click OK. You already see the difference, right? Yep. But I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to go straight into the noise uh, layer. So I am going to duplicate this. OK, I'm going to name it noise layer. Okay, and I'm going to go to filter, noise, median. All right, I'm going to use 40. It's good enough, right? Yeah, that's nice. That's fine. And then add a mask and 
I am going to invert the mask, like as if nothing has happened, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to take my brush, set it to white, right? Because we have inverted the mask. And I'm going to go ahead and paint on the... Um, oh, you see? Remember when I told yes, you to the, the overlay? Let's switch it normal. back to normal. Yes. Okay. See how nice he makes the hair? Yes. I'm going to reduce the opacity, of course. Of course. But still, it just makes it more like she went to the hairdresser mm -hmm. and she had her hair done. Of course, as I'm doing that, again, we discussed it yesterday, is taking some of the highlights away. Mm-hmm which is no problem. We'll, we'll add them uh, during the uh, dodge and burn process. Okay. And then I'm just going to work a little bit here to uh, get rid of some of the shadows. And that's it. Okay, I mean, it's a child. I don't want to do <laughs> yes, it. Yes, yeah. Or you know what I mean? I'm going to do the shadows a little bit more in the, uh, you know, uh, do dodge and burn. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's the before on the hair, and this is the after. Wow, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Now uh, let's go to the high frequency layer. And I'm just going to zoom in for this one. As I did notice here, she has a little line, and I'm just going to uh, fix that spot healing tool, right? Voila. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, now, about this here, which is, it's a little bit, a little bit messy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, when in these situations, the... Frequency separation, for me, you see, it doesn't do a good job. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. Hair close to the hairline, not good. Not a good mm -hmm. fix. But there's different ways. So I'm just going to leave it here. And, you know, I'm done with frequency separation. I mean, okay, maybe a little bit here. Okay, you hear this one? Yeah, that one does okay with it. Uh, maybe a few stray hair here, right? Mm -hmm. That's about it. I mean, that's it. I'm done. End of story. Okay, so that was <laughs> before and this was after. after. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So, uh, let me see. You know, I'm going to show you now what, how I usually deal with stray hair. Okay. Okay. Um, I will do another layer on top of that. Um, I'm going to delete the one before that. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lasso tool, right? And I'm just going to copy this entire area, right? Mm-hmm. And what I'm going to do is Command C, Command V. So I pasted it on a new layer, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So here it is. And I'm just going to mm. place it right here, right? It fits pretty well. Wow. Uh, yep, yep, yep. And then let's have a mask. Just, oops. oops. Turn it to black, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, okay. However, okay, I'm not a hundred percent happy here, so let's fix it up a little bit at the edge over there, because uh, we gotta leave a little bit in. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like I don't want it a hundred percent perfect. 
maybe put it back in. There, and what I'm gonna do now is I am going to darken it a little bit. So I'm going to create a curve adjustment. Mm -hmm. uh, click, create clipping mask. Where are you? Okay. And I'm going to darken it. Don't worry about that. Again, invert the mask. Mm -hmm. God, this inverting is the most helpful thing ever. <laughs> Isn't it? Honestly, it, it honestly, honestly, it honestly is. Honest, I mean, let me turn the... And just like darken it here because mm. you make it more natural, right? Yes. All right. I mean, that's it. I think it's pretty good, right? Yes, that's beautiful. Yeah. So before, after, that's pretty fine. It looks okay, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, I could just... Okay. That's a All really right. good tip there. I like how you covered up the hair or how you took it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's the last solution when, you know, there's no mm -hmm. other fit with frequency separation. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right. Now my dodge and burn. Uh, I want to get rid of a bunch of these things here. Anyway. Uh, right. I usually create two types of dodge and burn. One is to fix, and I'm going to go back out. One is to fix, um, uh, let's say, shadows like we're going to do here. Mm -hmm. And one is to add more light back into the highlights. Mm -hmm. okay. So let's just do that now. Oh, okay. Uh, let's create a curve adjustment. By the way, you know, it's... It's a little bit slow because I have so many programs running in the back. Because <laughs> uh, I, I want to show something later and I have I have Lightroom open and I have um, a media player because I'm going oh, to wow. show, okay. show people something cool later. So, all right. So this is our Dodge layer. Mm -hmm. Dodge. Dodge. And then let's do the same. Um, burn okay right so let's invert yes let's invert okay let's choose uh a soft brush with about a three percent opacity okay by the way i used to work you know uh it's something weird having because i switched to my uh, mac studio that came a couple of days ago mm -hmm. and the strangest thing i used to work with a flow of like two percent and three and the action was pretty um smooth i mean it was enough mm -hmm. and now yesterday i observed when i was uh teaching you guys that you know three percent was not uh was not enough it was really? too i have no clue why anyway i mean people will judge independently um according mm -hmm. to their liking in the image just know you, you should go as as uh, you know subtle you should yes. uh, each thing very gradually okay so as i said yesterday when i do this part i want to be zoomed out let's make sure white is selected yes hardness is set to zero and you know we're just gonna work to eliminate the oops i think you're on the burn layer yes of course indeed. <laughs> okay uh, it's still there let's just delete what i did okay right three percent let's go to dodge whoops and we said yesterday this is uh, a very time consuming process yes. usually for the photographer and the editor it's uh but it's um one of those things that actually it's very very important 
Yeah, but I love how you can, again, it gives you a bit more control. It takes a bit of time, but the control that you have of your yeah, shadows and, and, and your highlights. Exactly, is really nice. exactly. There, and go ahead. Oh, I was going to say there was another question, but I can ask it once you're finished um, discussing a little bit about that dodging and burning. Oh, oh is that something I can uh, answer? It was, while it, was a, it was a personal question of who is your favorite fine art photographer? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Eugenio Ricuenco. Hmm. Do you know him? No. No. Okay, well, I, I love a lot of photographers for different reasons, right? Uh, but when it comes to fine art, um, he's one of the best ever. Him and Erwin Olaf, uh, you know Erwin Olaf? Mm -hmm. hmm? Oh, I said yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, he's a legend, right? Mm -hmm. um, Eugenio Henri Cuenco is, is kind of on, on the same level. Of course, okay, he has a whole team, right? He, um, I suggest you look him up you will be astounded by oh, what he wow. does. But he does have an art director, a junior art director, oh, a, wow. a, a couple of stylists, an assistant, uh, a whole team that does the, um, the editing, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, at this level, I don't know how much he does um, on his own. By the way, I want to... I switched to luminosity. I don't know if you can see the difference. Yeah. Um, when you are doing um, dodging and burning, it's best to switch to luminosity because mm -hmm. that way, if you bring up the shadows too much, uh, you change color with it as well. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you have it switched to luminosity, you impact just that the luminosity right mm -hmm. and thank you sam for adding um eugenio's uh website so everyone can go ahead and view his work yeah i mean i it's so inspiring honestly i just i just love him and he does um he has a 365 day project every mm -hmm. year where he oh, does wow. one image every day well, his team does one image mm -hmm. every day. Um, so, yeah, I do all of the styling for my series, the concept, the props. I'm mm -hmm. a, you know, a control freak. <laughs> even, even, no, seriously, even on photo shoots where, you know, it's a paying job and I have a stylist and I have a makeup artist and I have all these people. I just, I don't let them do a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, it just, I, I don't know. I, I can't relinquish too much control. Another one that I like is, uh, Julia Fullerton. You know her, right? Um, no, I actually don't either. No, no. I have oh. a lot of learning to do. <laughs> uh, Julia Fullerton, uh, Justin Jalings. She's a Belgian. Um, what else can I think of? Um, Paul Kurutz is my main guy and Alexandra mm -hmm. for, but for commercial work, fashion and commercial work. Mm -hmm. Okay. So each of them has their own, uh, you see, why, why did I improve? And I think as a photographer, you know, as a photographer and as an editor, because I'm very open to learning from, you know, I, I, I go and I visit this, this beautiful masters of photography, their work, and I get inspired and I see how careful their post-production was. Yeah. You know, I used to spend in the beginning a lot of time in sites like, you know, 500 PX and Viewbug, but those are, you know, they're the wrong places, guys. Do not compare your work with those, you know, the places. You should go to the websites of these, you know, very accomplished artists and you should stay there. Hmm bring a, you know, a bed and then, you know, camp out <laughs> what you should do, you know, uh, because that's how, that's the only way you can improve. If you set your standards that high, yeah, not the standards of like the, cause I, I, I'm okay. I don't want to say something I shouldn't, but on 500 PX, I see a lot of overly done images, mm. plastic, 
you know, those like those Russian dolls mm -hmm. kind of a thing. And the same kind of stereotypical stuff with the sunset, mm. uh, overly saturated images. And that's that's not, you know, how it should be done. OK, uh, yeah, that's fine for now. Uh, let's do. Actually, the the burn right now. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna do much. I'm gonna just do another uh, dodge layer for the highlights, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I'm gonna increase it a little bit more since we're talking about now. We're gonna go into the hair. Mm -hmm. I like to do that too. Adding dodging the hair. Oh, I have so much. Out. Is it pathetic to say that I have a lot of fun when I do no. this? <laughs> I, I hate the dodging and burning for correction. But when it comes to dodging and burning to actually add texture, I love it. Yeah. It's just, this is where, you know, uh, creativity and being a good editor, uh, you know, it shows. That's yeah. where it shows. It's paying so much attention to that that detail. Yes, that normal like the normal eye might not look out for. Exactly, and, and guys, look, I am not going. I'm not doing this in a detailed way. I apologize for that, but I have so much material to cover, and I need to teach you how to do <laughs> lot lot files and how yes. to incorporate them into. Um, you know, camera raw and uh, Photoshop. Because after all, this lesson today is about series and how to harmonize them. So we have a lot to do. And the good thing is that if I think you covered a lot of these techniques in a lot of yes, detail yesterday. Yes, well, mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if um, again, if y'all have any questions or want to go into details about the dodging, the burning, the hair, whatever else. Um, we did a lot of that yesterday, or excuse me, the frequency separation specifically. Um, yeah. We did a lot of that yesterday. So you can tune back into YouTube with Behance to catch the replay. That way you can make sure you get all your tips. Yeah. I mean, as I said, how long did I take now? It was, it's, it's <laughs> long enough. <laughs> no, this is so, I mean, what is it now? Like 15 minutes, 20 minutes. There's no way on earth I would leave a fine art image, you know, with 15 minutes of dodging and yeah. burning. It's like a sin. True. <laughs> and you know what else I did? Uh, oh, yes, this is why I needed the burn. I'm like, yes, I need it for something. The I blanket. Went, yeah, I went into this mm -mm. blanket, trust me, and I did burning. I went it through every, like, you know, you see the, the, yeah. groove, the grooves here? And I just went, it was so oh, difficult. It took me forever, <laughs> you know, but it, it adds so much more texture, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to increase obviously the highlights cause you see it's white. That's very it white yeah. A lot of the, the, um, white and I, I don't, I mean, I did it, I think a little bit here in the background, but mainly it was to burn. Mm hmm so anyway, I'm going to leave that for now. And I'm actually going to take you to the finish thing. I think, you know, the, uh, yeah, this is it. Uh, and then there's a question. Yes. Um, somebody asked, how do you go about, I think they said repro, but I'm wondering reproducing a photo for large prints. Reproducing? What or, do you mean? Well, they said, they, they said how to repro a photo for large prints. Okay, well, first of all, you start with a raw file, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you don't, you, you just don't downsize it. You do not make it smaller. What I do right now, this one, after we're done, right? I will tell you my process. Mm -hmm. So I will let it rest, as we said yesterday, and yes. I will do the final sort of color balancing, all of that stuff. Once I'm happy, I am going to flatten the image and save this as a TIFF. Okay, always, of course, Adobe RGB. Um, okay, I use Profoto, but you know, anyway, Adobe RGB is fine enough, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, do not, you know, mess with the uh, with the sharpening. Do, don't do anything. Don't do mm -hmm. anything. 
Okay. Now that is going to be your image that you will use to resize. This is why you don't sharpen that. Mm. Okay. It's a mistake to sharpen the teeth as if, you know, somebody was viewing it on the computer, because then when you go to resize it to a JPEG, let's say a 2000 pixel wide or 1200, and you put even more sharpening, it's just going to look horrible. Mm -hmm. You keep it as a TIFF, unsharpened. And from there, I resize and I sharpen uh, the JPEG. And you know how I actually sharpen the JPEGs? I don't use the automatic... uh, you know, when you go to the JPEG, it says save as and, and by cubic, mm-hmm. I, I don't use that. I actually go back into camera raw. Oh, wow. Really? Yes. Uh, more control. It's mm-hmm. all about whatever gives you more control. Because let's say, guys, that I have, you know, I, I don't usually like to over sharpen hair. Mm-hmm. Okay. In my opinion, it's not a good thing you know, to over sharpen the hair. So if I'm in camera raw, I can choose what I'm going to sharpen, right? Mm -hmm. I create a new layer and I sharpen, you know, uh, and and then I layer out what I don't want. Mm -hmm. So that answers the question about the 72 DPI. That's a JPEG that goes, you know, on our website, all that good stuff, Instagram. So I have the tip that is unsharpened. If a client wants to buy that and, you know, uh, you know, I, I send it to the printer, right? Because I'm mm-hmm. the one printing the images. I will sharpen a second tip, you know, and I will rename that, um, pre, um, you know, image for printing, let's say. Mm-hmm. The fallen for printing. And that will have sharpening. And... Again, the size, you know, remains the original mm-hmm. resolution, which with my camera is about seven and a half uh, pixels mm-hmm. on uh, the longest side. And when I send it to the printer, I send it with a note, uh, do not make adjustments, right? Mm-hmm. Because the your local printer or whoever you use, they have their own machines that are, you know, calibrated in a different way. Mm-hmm. And they have automatic sharpening or exposure boosting. I work on an um, expensive ISO machine that is calibrated every couple of days mm-hmm. uh, because I am fully aware of like, you know, the issues that come with printing because I'm a photographer who prints their work. Yep. So it's, I'm not, you know, primarily for the web and I had a case actually once of a a fashion designer who wanted me to photograph her fashion prints Mm -hmm. to send them to Greece for printing the actual prints based on my images. You Mm -hmm. imagine there how color balancing and the exact colors have to be the same. Because if we put the wrong uh, prints, you know, to the printer in Greece, she's then, you know, at a loss of thousands of dollars Mm -hmm. because because the colors are not the same, correct? So, yes. so yeah, that that oh, is wow. process. Very, very detailed. Very, very detailed. And with that as well, how do you? There's another question. How do you export through Camera Raw? Uh, what do you mean? Like so that? when so when you said you were going back in and you were doing the resharpening and having the control ah. camera, how are you exporting at that point? I guess is the question that. No, you 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 uh, click OK and you go back into Photoshop. I'll, okay, I'll and then you. and then you export. Yeah, from there. yeah. it's f- through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you can't do it through. Um, yeah, you could do it through Camera Raw, but I bring it into Photoshop just in case mm-hmm. I need something else. And you know, all right, am I ready to show the before and after here? Right. Oh wow. And I How like that I- that detail back into the um, blanket. The blanket. I didn't do too much. I think. Let me see what the original was. Uh, no, that's not the original. Anyway. Okay. No, here's the dodge and burn. Sorry. Boo. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There. You go. That's the finished one. You see. There's a lot of, a lot of the blanket. detail. Yeah. A lot of the Ooh, detail cool. in the blanket. Yeah. See that? <laughs> Come on. All right. And, and that goes back to the comment of a, a person who asked about painterly. Mm-hmm. This is, you know, when you add texture like that, 
that's a very painterly technique. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. Going back to the series. So far, what I've done was specific to this image, right? From now and onwards, the stuff that I'm going to be doing is in a folder called series adjustments, because mm -hmm. these are the adjustments that I'm going to copy to the other images of the series. Okay. So I will take the entire folder, you know, like I have it here and copy it, command C, command V, and I will bring it into another image. Mm -hmm. Usually what I do, I actually create LUT files. But this fine art series was so very, it had a lot of selections, right? It wasn't mm -hmm. about universal changes. All right, let me change the color balance, selective colors. No, it was like, let's do the changes in the face. Let's do changes in the hair. So I couldn't do that. So I had to just import the files that you see here just basically delete their specific layer mask and make a new layer mask for the, the other image, right? Mm -hmm. But anyway, let's go to do some hair coloring, okay? Because, okay, the image needs color. If you mm -hmm. remember the final one, right? Yes. Add a color. So there's a, a couple of ways to do that. Uh, people maybe are more familiar with co colorizing, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, so, I mean, we can work with that. Let's do select subject again. Okay. And I am going to take the quick selection alt option for the minus to deselect the, the blanket and the, uh, face, right? Mm -hmm. So all you want selected is the hair. Yeah, it's the hair. Mm. The brows I don't need to select because they're I will do it in you know a manual kind of mm -hmm. way. Now I'm going to use the magic wand tool to add uh, actually, you know what, back into the quick selection because I want to oopsie. I want to deselect the um I want to deselect the leaves, the flowers. What did he do? Okay. Oh, if I push it too much, anyway, I'll do it. Anyway, let's leave it where it is. I am going to go into the magic wand. I have it at a tolerance of 10, low tolerance, so it doesn't add much of the face. And with the shift being held, I'm going to add this area here. Right? Yeah. And for now, it's good enough. I mean, we'll we'll come and refine it, right? Mm -hmm. So let's go to the adjustment layers and select a hue saturation. Hello. Okay. <laughs> there we are. And let's go into the master, hit the colorize. What an amazing wow. color. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Horrendous. <laughs> yeah. And let's take it to where I want to take it. It's about here. Saturation. I mean, you can always adjust it, right? Mm -hmm. I, I prefer to maybe, I mean, I'm not definitely not going to overdo it, but even if you do, you just reduce the opacity, right? Mm -hmm. So right about here. Yep. That's good enough, right? And let's switch to color because I don't want to affect the luminosity. Yeah. Okay. Because, you know, it might make it uh, brighter. So, mm -hmm. color. Okay. Um, now we are going to go de uh, closer. What did it do? What the heck? I had not. I think okay. the flower, the flower, the flower might have. Yeah, it was selected. Don't. Okay. Dang it, I'm gonna do it again. Sorry guys, let's go back. I'm just gonna do it this time like this. Okay. 
Any questions while I'm doing this since, you know, I've already explained and no questions at the moment, but if y'all have any questions, um, whether you're on YouTube or Behance, please drop them for our, so that way we can ask them. And then I think this is also a good point just to, once we figure out the hair color, we can do a quick recap in case anyone joined the live since we started an hour ago. Oh, <gasps> An hour already has passed. It's, 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 oh, holy it's, moly. An hour has. We just hit an oh, hour. <laughs> no We're, way. We are about 30 minutes away from our artist spotlight. So y'all can see there. We got the oh, little yeah. countdown that came up. So we'll be doing our artist spotlight in about 30 minutes. All right. I'm going to move fast, 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 <laughs> fast. Shoot. What just happened now? What happened? It's not changing the uh No. That is strange, isn't it? Anyway, select, reselect. Okay. okay. Colorize, there we go. Maybe here, here, that's fine. Okay, click okay, color, that's fine. Right, let's take the brush um, and just flow, set to 100%. And color in the eyebrows too, yep. Oops. I'm going to do real fast. I apologize, you know, because, no. uh, you know what I actually do? And I, I'm going to show you um, a couple of tricks. Mm -hmm. Other than the fact that I actually zoom in all the way, set this to about four and oh, actually wow. hair like this. I, I did this. This is mm -hmm. in my product you know the image is is with like <laughs> a brush of a size of four and six <laughs> i need all this hair done yeah. you know i'm not gonna let any black hair show through not at all show through no 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 <laughs> no 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 although for now i'm just gonna spend a couple of, of minutes telling you what you need to uh be careful mm -hmm. with when you're doing uh coloring just make sure you know the hairline is not oh. you know so we don't want the hair a hundred percent gone because it will look like it doesn't belong look yes. here for example yeah. if i just removed it it just doesn't look good yeah. so what i'm gonna do is reduce opacity right so right there you know yeah. right okay a lot more natural and then, um, the other thing that I did, I had a new layer and I went and I put, um, I actually sample, I am sorry, not a new layer, a new, um, the same saturation layer, mm -hmm. but this time I deleted the layer and I did command I, right. And I went and brushed hairs, just. Yeah. The little um, small hairs that might've been missed in the. Yeah. But no that was a third phase remember oh, that, okay that was when i went at the end and did you know at uh, um with a brush of four no this is a, a, a something else that i'm going to show you because the hairline is a little bit gray right mm -hmm. you, you noticed it here so all i'm doing i'm just quickly just putting some you know, i'm just doing it very fast and actually yeah and then I don't know if this is going to work because I actually did it. So I'm going to do it on a layer because I need the layer to be blurry. And I am going to choose the. Um, from here. And put it to soft light. Mm -hmm. OK, and just paint here. and around the hairline. And what I did, I actually went into filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I blurred it. Mm. Okay. And you know what that does? It gets rid of the gray tech, uh, the grayness behind here. 
on, on the skin. Mm -hmm. So you see, yeah, see how it was gray, and now it, it it's more you know the uh, color of the hair. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just gonna zoom out. My God, an hour, an hour. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna remove remove and and show you the final hair color i yes. think so this one needs i don't know why it's here i gotta remove this part here and while you do that um there okay. are some really yeah, great comments yeah um somebody said that they are mesmerized by your techniques oh <laughs> thank you um, so much thank you appreciate it <laughs> someone complimented us both and saying that we're both great and so yeah. wonderful and great so thank you all so thank much you. and then thank there's you. a question of yes do you have any tips for directing emotion and or posing the way your daughters express the subtle um subtle emotion is amazing mm. yeah i mean i um well, in this case, it doesn't. I, I, I was going to say get to know your model, but, you know, I gave birth to this one. <laughs> you know her pretty well. Because, you know, the first thing is that they have to be uh, feeling very comfortable with you, you know. Um, so I actually tell my models to think of something sad, <laughs> really. Not just pose. Don't think of something that made you sad. Some the struggles you went through your life, something like that, and just just give me that expression. And a lot of times, you know, okay, now she has a flower in her mouth. I like the mouth to be a little bit open, mm -hmm. not gaping open, but just a tiny bit. Mm -hmm. It helps with the expression a lot. It softens the expression, okay? And like a little tilting of the head instead of straight. This, it just always gives this sadness. You know, I asked her, for example, in this one, I want your shoulders to be hunched. Mm. Okay? I don't want you to be, uh, sometimes when I, I want something else, I'll, I'll tell my model, be proud, be, mm -hmm. you know, you're brave, you're a mm -hmm. brave soldier. You know, I, I give like these scenarios, let's say. And we laugh a lot with the, my subjects. So, you know, I make them feel comfortable. Okay, I want to go to the most important part yes my uh thing here right my daughter was uh, as you could tell from the in the beginning um she is um she's not fair skinned okay and this series is all about you know the very white very pure skin mm -hmm. how do you accomplish that if you don't have like an, an icelandic model Okay, so I use uh, the, uh, I'm going to use a new layer and I am going to change to soft light. Okay, and I am going to sample from the lightest part of the skin, right? Maybe here or here where the nose is, for example, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to paint it in. Oops, I'm painting it on the layer. Hello. <laughs> so this is called phase whitening. Right. So we're going to paint. Okay. I've, obviously, I'm going to make a selection so I don't go outside. Right. Outside into the background. Hello. So there we go. Let's do that. I mean, the hair I can always fix, but... It's fine for now. I'm going to overdo it. I'm just going to intentionally go through everything to make it easier and just paint it back. And of course, I did it to the blanket. Mm. Yeah. See, this, this, I actually use this technique and I'm going to tell you a little secret. When you actually, okay, this is a great tip. Um, when you underexposed a subject, right? And there's more shadow than you would want to. The best way, instead of messing up your image by boosting exposure with curves, 
take the soft light technique. Mm. Add some like brightness some through color because color itself can add brightness. Mm. It doesn't like reduce the quality of your image because do know that as we introduce more light, it's like, you know, like boosting your ISO, right? Within the camera, mm. it, it creates artifacts. It messes up the image. So look, I, I got rid of the shadow in the back. How great is that, right? Oh, wow, look. you did. And it, you see every detail and there's no artifacts, no nothing. Mm -hmm. Look. All that detail is still there. Yeah. I'm not fooling around. No, no. No, that's a really great tip because like you yes, mentioned before, if you ex increase the exposure, you would have lost yes. all of that. Guys, I, I gave you an amazing tip. Come on. This is one of the yeah. most important <laughs> tips. I, I give tips I shouldn't be giving, but hey, <laughs> you know, I go beyond and above. <laughs> okay. So let's actually, I'm going to remove some of it obviously we don't want it from the eyes right and from here and here dun, 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 dun. and here uh, i'm going to reduce my opacity because i actually like how it looks here Apply a little bit Okay, so how does it look? Wow. Right? There's an additional step, actually, if you want to go one more, <laughs> because I think this is even wider. You see that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Check this out. This is crazy. Crazy stuff I'm teaching you. Okay. All the secret tips. <laughs> how much yes, you're going to become like me. I'm going to become obsolete then. <laughs> All right. Curves. Clip it. All right. Put a dot in the middle and go nuts with it. Oh, wow. Okay. Let me see. Let me hold it. Let me hold it. Come on. Come on, girl. Let me hold. Okay. Got it. Whoa. Come on. Come wow. on. Wow. What is that? What is that? Is that nice or what? It's such uh, a good yeah. time for more whitening. Yes. But I, again, because it increased the uh, luminosity, uh, to go to the, I'm actually. This is luminosity, actually. Mm -hmm. So, and you can, of course, you know, we're going to reduce it. The opacity. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And even with the face whitening, let's say, you can just go, you know, as much as you want to, right? This mm -hmm. is the power of the opacity. We don't have to have, like, so, anyway, let me see how it was. Okay. So, this is it. Yeah. All right. Um. What I'm going to do now is add a little contrast to uh, to my subject. So I'm going to introduce a curves adjustment layer. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Remember yesterday what I taught you? Alt Option Auto. Yes. Enhance monochromatic. Yes. Right. You see, but I only want it. Uh, with the subject, right? Mm -hmm. Now we, do I have a selection of the subject so I don't do that every time? Mm, maybe I don't. So let's do this again. I keep deleting the layer. I'm using <laughs> it to just, you know, I'm using just it to, to just make, select. Just make the selection. Yeah, make the selection. Because the, the, the subject gets updated. So you need to use mm -hmm. the latest updated version. Yes, yes. So, you know, delete the mask on that, put a mask. Boom, and it's only on the on layer. The subject, yep. See? So yeah, she, well. now she's more, it's like three dimensional, right? Mm -hmm. She pops so much more from the background. So that's that. Okay. I brought a texture. I'm going to show you. Um, oh, wow. It was normal. Uh, yeah, this is the texture. And Again, you said you, you shoot all yes, the textures. Yes, yep. an old wall. So, <laughs> you know, I have, and, and I like that it's, you know, this, this color, because we use this color in fine art, mm -hmm. this like um, sepia tone. Mm -hmm. So, 
uh, do you, set. Yes. Do you, so how do you go about shooting your textures? Are you just like, while you're walking around outside, you see something, you shoot it. Do you always have your camera on? Like, are you intentionally going no, out and looking? No, because I'm not a street <laughs> photographer or anything. This actually, you know, a lot of them, when I go on vacation, mm. it's a good tip. If you're going on vacation and you're just walking around, I mean, I'm not just going to shoot everything. I actually shoot a lot of textures mm. for my work you know that's beautiful yeah so soft light uh what i'm gonna do here i'm gonna delete that uh we want it only obviously for the background right mm -hmm. now remember when i added contrast i had the subject selected so here's a cool trick go to add mask to selection and it will reselect it right mm -hmm. and then click command shift i and now the opposite is selected so i will click into texture make a mask and it's on the background wow. and i'm gonna reduce the opacity to about 45 and now i'm gonna bring my leaves that i shot um again let's see normal okay um those were eucalyptus trees that i shot mm. and in every image i don't know if we can go back quickly to the series i actually it's the same image it's the same um eucalyptus tree mm -hmm. but i inverted i trans i use a transform tool and i inverted and then i just rotated them a little bit so that mm. you know they look like they're different you yeah, know different you here, here, yeah here so yeah, I, I didn't want to have the same position every time. Mm -hmm. That's why I said this series is a little bit more difficult. So it's not just universal adjustments that you go to the next image and you apply, right? Yes. So, okay. And uh, I th this one, I use multiply because what happens with multiply? It makes everything darker mm -hmm. right and i wanted that i wanted that moodiness because the whole goal is for my subject to shine through she's this pure child mm -hmm. you know i wanted uh just just her face and a little bit of the blanket to shine through so i selected the subject again right so mm -hmm. it wouldn't be in the background um, sorry, it would the multiply effect wouldn't be applied on the face, but I applied it onto the blanket because if I just selected, see, I'm gonna do it one more time. I'm gonna delete that. Right. If I had selected, let's say add selection and did this, mm -hmm. it looks fake. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's just the background, and I just put her in the background mm -hmm. it, it, uh, that's not cool so i actually merged it you see uh, in the uh actual one uh let's use the clipping mask back in you see now how she mm -hmm. it's almost like she's hiding behind yeah. the and she's emerging from the shadows right mm -hmm. so i used i use this technique if you notice the blanket is not pure white mm -hmm. i uh, I selected the blanket and I used 50% opacity and I left some of the multiplying that. So at the end of the day, the only thing that is 100% not affected is the face. face yeah. And it makes it pop even more. Yeah, okay? absolutely. Yeah. So, and the last thing I did was add a color balance. Um, I will show you here. I just wanted to make it a little bit cooler. The way I cool things is I go to the highlights and I move it into the cyans and the yellows. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's my usual thing of, of removing a little, because you see it was a little bit red, yes. you know? Yeah. So, so I want it. it. Yes. And that's it. We oh. have, we have it. Shall I? We see again the before yes. And after. Let's do the before and after, uh, and then kind of talk about what we did, especially for those that may have joined a bit late into the live. Yeah. So this was the before, and this was wow. the after. Ta-da! 
I just okay. love the amount of creativity um, that you can have in Photoshop. You can come in with a vision and an idea and then yes. just have fun and do whatever, fun, it, whatever yes. you're feeling. So this is beautiful. Exactly. Uh, I, yeah. pers I personally don't do a lot of, comp I don't do really any compositing, but I'm like, wow, this is, it's just, a, it's like a dreamland. You've entered like a whole new yeah. world. Um, okay. Yes. I chose these two, to be honest. I mean, 90% of my work is not compositing, mm -hmm. but like, what am I going to talk about? Like <laughs> my, my fashion models more beautiful. <laughs> For, you know, we will run out of time. So I chose, uh, you know, things that needed compositing. Now, how much time do we have? Because so um, we have about 10 minutes before we start doing the artist spotlight. And then after that point, once we finish, because we'll do that spotlight for about five, uh -huh. 10 minutes, we'll have about, I want to say, if, if I'm doing my math right, 15 minutes after that point. Okay, so 25 well, in total. Because I'm going to show you some compositing, you know, that's more intense um, from my work. Now I'm going to go to my fashion editorials. I showed you some yesterday. I mean, um, a lot of it is fashion that, you know, for this is for a fashion brand. Mm -hmm. So most of it, it's really just, you know, a lot of color grading. And the most important stuff, when you get it right, your lighting is right. You don't need anything, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just color grading. Um, like, okay, here there was compositing, but Look, my compositing, I never choose, other than the ants yesterday, that was an <laughs> exception. I have to say that was an exception. Everything that you see in my images was there. Mm -hmm. I do not add anything that wasn't there. Like this was there. I mean, I, I set my camera on a tripod and I shoot, you know, everything that I need there. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I mean, this is the same model. Wow. So, I mean, I even have to plan where I'm going to put her next. Mm -hmm. So the expression, you know, had to match here. Um, this was the same person. So, wow. you know, completing it took for her, me to do the robe. And I mean, here was my assistant holding it wow. the first time. And we changed positions and then, yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, a lot of work goes into this. And I'm going to show you the most demanding one that I did for the Australian National University. Um, I, I did cinemagraphs and stills. So I'm just going to go into the stills. Um, yeah, this one wow. took me about, I think, 20 to 30 hours. Because the box, the, you see this glass box? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it wasn't this big, obviously. I mm -hmm. had... At the, um, I had them make me just a small glass box and I just took it to the desert and I shot it right here where I shot my model and jumping up and down with a trampoline, right? And wow. then I removed the trampoline and then I shot it using the same exact lighting so it wouldn't be different. But then the compositing was hard because when you make the subject, uh, when you make the object bigger, you also make the sand bigger, yeah. right? Particles of the sand. So I had to go and match the size of the sand to this size of the sand. Wow. So it took forever, this one too. This was, was also a wall that was like tiny. But you see, I had to create the same sh shadows. It's mm -hmm. all about showing so that you feel it's there. This one was a compositing too of wow. like, yeah, I think it was three guys or four guys. So yeah. <laughs> so that is, this is absolutely stunning. And then time that goes into this. Yes. Wow. Yes. I mean, I had to borrow all these uniforms and all the instruments from a uh, national opera <laughs> so <laughs> this one oh boy i mean look look at the stuff the uh the things i had to distort wow these, these were cubes you know i just had a cube oh, uh, this nice. do you know that this was like i think one or two objects and i just distorted them in photoshop yeah, and the floating balls, I just had them, I, I, this was, um, yeah, I had two sizes and I had them like, you know, um, uh, bouncing the ball up and down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so 
But that was, yeah, this was the exceptions. Most of my work, as I said, is non-composite. Mm -hmm. um, like, uh, you know, like this one, for example. What you see is what I had there. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't, I didn't composite anything. I had a different model here. So, yeah. Boom. Wow. Yeah. So uh, let me know if now if I can jump into the lots. Uh, it's a whole different. Yeah. Uh, let's, start, that's gonna... let's start to um, jump okay. into that a little bit. We can okay. introduce. Let's introduce the LUTs, like the concept of LUTs, and, and yes, then we can course. we can move okay. into the artist spotlight in the next five okay. minutes and then finish up. Yes, this series was difficult, as I said, because it didn't have a lot of universal adjustments, but a lot of my images do, and it has to do with color grading. So this was a series I did for a uh, sunglass brand, right? I don't have the, the other two images anyway, just these three will suffice. Mm -hmm. So let's say I want to do some universal changes, like um, I am going to uh put more contrast right bring more contrast into the image uh one of my favorite uh, ways is to use blending modes so i'll go into hue saturation i won't even change it right and i will go into overlay you see how mm. you see how it changes it this yeah. is the we call it the magazine look mm -hmm. and something is very contrasty so I'm not going to use it all the way. So I'm going to do it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And uh, also let's go to selective color. And I want to go into the blacks, the fashion world. Uh, this is something that is used often in color grading. When we put um, uh, blue and cyan into the shadows, you see that? Mm, yes. There? Okay. And again, we're doing a color, but if you don't, if you want it to be more obvious this time, you're going to leave it at normal. Mm -hmm. Okay. And just so that I, you, you can see it better, I'm going to leave it like that. And then the last thing, let's do a um, color balance where I'm going to make the skin a little bit more yellow and cyan, as we said. Okay. And the mid tones. Put it back here. Okay. It's subtle. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, it's subtle, but I can I see mean, it. I, I mean, check it in the forehead. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's more high end. It's called high end, uh, you know, color grading. So now, Command G, I'm going to group those, right? See yeah. that? Boom. Big difference, right? Mm -hmm. It's more stylish. Yeah, it's it's more like magazine oriented. Mm. All right, let's say you wanted to apply the same. You have, let's say, 20 images, right? How do you apply all of that? This is where we create a lab file. So I'm going to go into the file, export, color, lookup tables. All right. And we're going to name this action, let's say, that we created. And I'm going to name it high fashion color grading okay and it, there's a bunch of formats i select the the format uh, called q mm -hmm. and click okay right and it says it's a lot file right and i'm gonna name it again here as well high fashion color grading save it okay let's go to this image now and let's apply it to this image. Mm -hmm. How do we do that? Let's go to the adjustment layers, choose the color lookup mm -hmm. adjustment layer. And then here where it says load 3D file, click on that, click on load 3D LUT, and it will bring you into the dialog. You have to obviously remember where you saved, saved it. Saved it, yes. Saved it into the project, you know, where the images were saved. And you see here, the high-end fashion color grading, right? Mm -hmm. And I open that and boom, wow. it gets applied. Okay. Now, obviously in Photoshop, you have to open each image individually and apply this. 
but let's say you're a wedding photographer or a fashion photographer and you have like 30, 40 images. Come on, you can't open 40 images in four <laughs> over and over again. Unfortunately, Lightroom as of today does not accept uh, cube extensions and that makes life a little bit harder. Um, it only accepts XMP. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is a way to go around it. We can uh, bring this profile into Camera Raw. Mm -hmm. And once it's brought into Camera Raw, Lightroom automatically gets it as well. Oh, wow. Yes. It's it's amazing. Ooh, isn't it? ooh, that is a really nice tip. I'm really, yeah, I'm yeah, really yeah. excited to see that. Before we do that, let's pay it. Take, I think this is maybe a nice little break to do a quick artist yeah. spotlight and then we can come back and see how we can do that magic in Lightroom as well. So as y'all know, every Adobe Live, we do an artist spotlight to highlight an artist. And today, who do we have? We have Alexandra Kingo. I mean, you guys asked me before about my favorite photographers and I do have a lot of fine art photographers that I like. But I wanted to show you a commercial and, and fashion photographer because, you know, she inspires me for my commercial work uh, because I love color. You saw it in my images. Yeah. Well. I use a lot of color, uh, but this is very pop art. And mm -hmm. it's actually she, she creates um, things with humor. She uses mm -hmm. humor, and I love that. And when you're dealing with brands, uh, brand work, the new way, how, how, how shall I say? Because I used to be like a marketing executive and, and I know how brands think. Nowadays, it's about using humor in your ads. Let's not be too mm -hmm. serious. Let's not take ourselves too seriously. Yeah. It's what the brand wants to say. And she does that. Um, and you can see here, I mean, she's funny. Uh, let's see, like... <laughs> I mean, I love her. She, let's see. She uses a lot of like, um, you know, she creates MP4 nowadays, mm -hmm. commercials. See here, I mean, I love this one. Binoculars with sushi, right? <laughs> I mean, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. That's beautiful work. Yes. I mean, she's very creative. Yeah. I love, uh, the, I love the, the color. I'm a huge fan of color as well. Um, yeah, it's color blocking, just, right. And, yeah, and color, you blocking. Know, color blocking and, uh, you have to know color theory. Yes. And, and it's very important to know what goes with what, like mm -hmm. here, I the love the and the red. Yep. Yeah. The complementary um, colors there. Yes. Um, I did an image like that's. I want to show you. I don't know. Do I have it? Can I show? Yeah, of course. Or, or, um, how I uh, maybe it's in my. Beauty and while you look that up, if you all have somebody you want us to highlight for our next artist spotlight, um, make sure you go ahead and recommend that person. There is there should be a button I want to say above the chat for you to submit for your next artist spotlights, and then make sure you check out today's spotlights work. That way we, um, you can show her, um, show them some love because, ah, the color, the coloring is probably my favorite part, I think. And this is stunning what you yeah. just pulled up. Yeah. I mean, this is where I also use, because I'm of the same thing. I use humor mm -hmm. and I call this image a difficult and most difficult call. You know, when you <laughs> are actually pulling teeth from teeth. someone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is why the cactus and that is why the toothpicks here. So wow. kind of, that is why I love Alexandra King. Oh, oops, where is she? Uh, let's go here. Yes. Did we lose her? No, no she, there she is. <laughs> here's again, you know, when she's promoting uh, sushi. Wow. I mean, come on. Humor, right? Mm -hmm. Great color blocking and great clean lines and great lighting. I mean, it's, it's very nice. It's very clean. Yes. Right? Very, uh, very clean. Yes. And, uh, you know, she used that technique that I showed you 
here for the hair, you know, in frequency separation. Yes. yes. Clean it like we did. So, how much do we have a bit more? Um, yeah, so this is really good, a good stopping place for our hardest spotlight. So thank you, Sam, for dropping um, their website. So that way you guys can go ahead and check out more of their work. And I think we're in a good place to kind of go back yes. and, and start to uh, finish up that conversation about yeah. the, the last Because I, 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 I just have it here and I want to show it because she does a lot of work like this. Now the new trend, you know, is with MP4s. Mm -hmm. uh, because of NFTs as well. And I'm in that space too. So I want to show you, and this shows how many wow. things you can do with Photoshop. Guys, I created this in Photoshop and then took it to uh, After Effects. And maybe that can be another tutorial down the road if you like this image or something. But it shows how powerful Photoshop is. You could do, and I'm going to have it be play. Oh, wow. Check this out. There wasn't a face before there, right? <laughs> no, there wow, was. Wow. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, it took me, oh, it was the, um, I think it was the most time consuming thing I ever did. Now, all of that, I, I didn't borrow anything. I shot in studio, right? I put um, zippers on everything. Um, and you can we you can do this in Photoshop uh, with the timeline using the timeline, mm -hmm. okay, and the rotations. The only thing that you, you needed in uh, After Effects was the zooming in and out of the camera and and just these the zipper closing here. So wow. yeah, that's the things we can do in Photoshop, guys. You know, many many things. Okay, uh, let me move this. Where were we? We had just finished, um, you had talked about how you can create a LUT in Photoshop, but then yeah. we wanted to talk about how you can transform it for, um, okay. so it can import it into Lightroom. Yes. So what we can do is actually go into filter, camera raw filter, okay? You see here, these little two circles. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna press that and it takes you into the presets that Camera Raw already has. In, or, and in order to create one, come over here where this paper is, and it says create preset. Mm -hmm. right? If I just click it, you're not gonna be able to do anything other than what Camera Raw offers you. So the basic adjustments, the curves, the details, mm -hmm and import the LUT file as it is here. So um, this is a neat trick, right? What, keep it up here, press the Alt option. What do you notice now? It's completely different, right? Yeah, yes. And now you can click into oh. look, the color lookup. And now I'm going to go to where I saved it. And, oh, oh, I didn't click it. No, click it, hello. Okay, <laughs> you see? Why isn't it taking it? You see that now it accepts yeah, it. Yes, it accepts yeah. it, but it's not. Yes, maybe I do high fashion color grading. Why isn't it like, I don't understand I know. it so many times. Don't even tell me now. We came this far because <laughs> I, it is it is how it's done. I don't understand it. Uh, maybe let's cancel and try again and see if uh, it. Let's get out of here. I don't know, maybe. Filter, camera roll. Okay. Okay. This is the strangest thing and it's embarrassing because this is how you do it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, there we go. Jesus. 
Okay. Oh. <laughs> Sweating. Okay. Load. Thank you. Yes. I fashion color grading. Okay. You know what it, I was doing, right? You know what I was doing wrong? Oh, well, you, you... I had a brain fart. Oh, okay. Yeah, you it, didn't, the color lookup it, table was right underneath. The table. I was clicking on the color, uh, on the look table. Yes. You yes. Know? Color lookup table people. Okay. <laughs> now. All right. Okay. So now let's go back into the editing mode, right? Into the basic stuff. Mm -hmm. Nothing's done, right? You see these little four squares? Yeah. This is browsing profiles. Okay. Here is the basic stuff. And underneath it says user profiles. Let's click mm -hmm. on that. What do you see? Uh, Our profile. Yay. If I click on it, it already, it, it, it transformed it, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. If I, if I set it to zero, it takes it away and it actually gives you the chance to um, increase it more it to twice the amount right but we don't want that i'll just leave it to a hundred percent and this is it you click okay and it's here now the problem is as i said before you don't do things in camera raw you start with camera raw mm -hmm. files it's the tiff files that you need to adjust and obviously you cannot take tiff files as a collection mm -hmm. into camera raw you need lightroom to do that mm -hmm. so without further ado this is light what we're room. waiting for yes yes lightroom i'm in the develop module you guys because i already imported the uh the three images right mm -hmm. so you see there is no adjustments the, uh, the profile is not here yet right but look now what happens i will click again on the uh, browse profiles Okay. Basic. Where is it? I'm in his favorites. Oh, uh, oh, you know what? Could it have been? You know why? Because I had it open from before. Oh, okay. How about if I close this? Yes. Let's yeah. see. Just right. Created this. So, yeah. I thought I would save us time by <laughs> it often, but you know, it didn't but take maybe, it. Yeah, it probably didn't import it oh. in. Yeah. There, there we go. Goes. There it goes. Wow. I did not know that, that you could do genius. that. Yes. Excellent tip yet again, Elena. Right. So, so let's apply it to the first one, right? There it goes. You see that it's applied. Mm -hmm. and do in in Photoshop like uh, in uh, um, Lightroom like you do with in Camera Raw. You can come here, right click on the image, develop settings, copy settings, right? Mm -hmm. Click all of them, copy. Then go to all of your images, select all of them, right click, develop settings, and paste the settings. And look, wow, everything is pasted, and then you you have it forever and ever. And I gave you guys this LUT file to use if you have like fashion images or portrait images that are kind of fashiony and you want to give mm -hmm. them a little, you know, edge. Obviously, um, yes, let's quit. Um, I didn't create this one. I create something a little bit more refined because now, you know, mm -hmm. I just, you know, three things. Yeah. Um, yeah, I spent a little bit more time and I, I did, you know, I really uh contrasty nice uh high-end uh, fashion lot and you will have it i think right there's a link to it where they can download it yes i think that there is maybe our somebody will put it in the chat for people to have access to i know that we want to be able to provide that to everyone so i'll see yeah. if that's ended up okay so yeah this is this is it i don't know how much time do we have if, we yeah. still have about 10 minutes left oh my god i rushed through everything <laughs> <laughs> okay. we still yeah. have about 10 minutes left what what was the um so that image that the the sunglasses one what was the lighting setup for this i'm kind of curious for that oh yes okay yeah um color gels you guys are familiar, right? With mm -hmm. using color gels. I did this at a dentist's office. And oh, wow. 
Yeah, I use when you have you, when you use color gels, you have to grid your light. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, do people? Uh, let's ask. Do, have they used it before? Do they know about? Let's you know, color. We, can, a we can ask, but let's explain it. So then that right. way, in so, case anyone. So color gelling is, you know, it's just pieces of sort of transparent pieces mm -hmm. of paper that are colorful. You can buy them online. Uh, it has all kinds of colors, uh, everything you can think of. And you put them in front of your uh, light, you know, mm -hmm. your light source, uh, you know, your speed lights, mm -hmm. your... Uh, uh pro photo you know mm -hmm. whatever you use right so in order for that to work though you can't have a, a lot of a natural light coming in bleeding mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. the the setting uh so when i was at this dentist's office we closed all the windows all the shutters and everything and i gelled my lights i had uh three lights I gelled them and mm. I gridded them. You know, mm. I, I put a grid so that it would go exactly where I wanted it. Mm -hmm. And so it wouldn't bleed into, you know, an area that I didn't want it to go. I wanted this cyan to be around her, but I didn't want it on her face. Mm. So what happened is that I turned down the color temperature of the scene, you know, with my camera, mm -hmm. which made the, the gelling even richer. And for the face, I put, you know, there is a orange, a quarter orange color gel. Mm -hmm. It's we use it for color temperature correction. So when your scene is cool and you want your face not to be obviously like, let's say I just used a, um, a light mm -hmm. without this correction gel on it. She would be kind of cyan, right? Mm. Because I, I dropped the color temperature uh, to, I think about maybe 4,000 or mm -hmm. three and a half. So that that's, that's cool, right? Mm -hmm. So by putting that uh, orange, a uh, quarter orange, it, it is, it just brought back the tones, the real tones of her skin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right? Yeah. And I had a light, you know, to the left, a light to the right, and a light facing her. I think you can see a little bit. Yeah, here. yeah, I see that. Yeah. I mean, for some of them, obviously, because she was front, the catch light was here, but when you're doing sunglasses, um, it's not cool to give your client, you know, the sunglasses with the catch light of your light. Mm -hmm. It's very distracting. So I actually had to go in and uh, and kill it. So mm, yeah, wow. that was the lighting. Yeah, and these were actual wires, dentist wires. Wow that she used she actually happened to have braces you guys oh. and i'm like okay how do i use these braces creatively we are at the dentist and this whole series there's two three more images is called uh, no uh pain no gain oh, right wow. it's about botox yeah. and you know all these treatments so there you have it absolutely stunning absolutely stunning wow and, like, Yes, let's see. Do you all have any questions that you want to drop in the chat? Someone did say that you make it so easy to understand, which I agree. Thank um, you. Well, you've done a really amazing job in both lives to so just be able to break things down. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so the if, rest of us can understand. Uh, if we have more time, five minutes, you said? Yeah, we, have a, we still have about, let's say... Yeah, five minutes, five, six All minutes. Right. I'm just going to bring another image. Um, it's the same series. It's Hindering Narcissus. It's another one. And I just want to show you how I creatively kind of fix the hair a little here. Mm. This is the image, right? Uh, let me see if I can find what I, I did. Uh, okay. Uh, fixing hair. 
I have so many layers. I mean, I wasn't planning this, you guys. Yeah. It's just, you know, I'm just trying to see what I did. Okay, let's assume for the sake, I, I'm, it doesn't matter. I'm going to show you something, right? Assume this hairline was messy, which it was messy, and mm -hmm. I fixed it, but I can't find now. You see? Yes. I was before and how it was after. That was the last image. My daughter was getting annoyed and it was like ah, moving around and she didn't care. So I couldn't have time to fix her hair. So you see how everything was here like this? Messy. Yes. Okay. You know, uh, I'm going to show you something. Um, so create, let's say, a new layer, right? And what I do, I go and use this, um, this elliptical marquee tool. Mm -hmm. and let's say i let's say this was the the hairline right and i wanted to bring it down here a little so i take the uh clone tool right and i clone it in here oh, and what wow. you see when you have the marquee tool command d hold on we're not done but you see how Yes, it yeah. Smoothed it, right? And whereas if you just were trying to do it manually, it would look fake. Like, let's mm -hmm. see right now. Let's do this uh, and and do the same thing. Let's say I choose this. Look, yeah. I mean, I would first have to set it at a hard line and then we're humans. Uh, I mean, yeah. ugh, ugh, uh, brrr, what is this? <laughs> Horrible. Okay. So, I did this, but okay, it's still a little bit fake. Remember what I taught you guys yesterday when we were doing the ants about shadowing? Yes. Creating shadow. Let's double click <laughs> and go into the layer style, baby, and drop a shadow. Wow. Right? Okay. So, uh, no. Yeah, this is it. Um, I can do, I mean, uh, something is like, I don't know why it's, you know, it's doing a shadow here, but it wasn't doing it before anyway. The whole point is to show you that that's what I used to uh, do the hair. I actually created a shadow underneath, like right here, for example, mm -hmm. you see? So you see without it? Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, I'm going to mask the effect. Yes, yeah. And yeah, I mean, this is just me showing you, like, where is it? Opacity, 21%. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, you see? Come on. Right. That's how we do it. And I actually do it for the hair. Let's say mm -hmm. here it's really messy and I wanted uh, to sculpt it, right? So I would go with the lasso tool and just go maybe like this, you know, mm -hmm. and, and start building here. So that's a good technique to know for the how, hair. How did you um, learn this technique? It seems like a lot of kind it's of- my own. It's yeah. my own. <laughs> it's a I, lot of- <laughs> It's experimentation. Can I say something? I, yeah. you know, I haven't watched many, you know, tutorials. It's just me mm. playing, being fascinated with Photoshop and knowing that in Photoshop, you can do anything. Yep. Therefore, I'm like, there's got to be a way and I'm <laughs> going to find it. I'm going to figure it out. You know, plus also before, you know, going to college and stuff, I used to be a painter, mm. right? So I, I did, you know, uh, painting and I, I am very intuitive when it comes to shadowing and these things how to make things more realistic mm -hmm. when you paint you know that's what you do so i i, I have an idea what i want to do beforehand mm -hmm. so yeah it always helps so no, that that you guys and yeah that was it to here so that is so beautiful Let's see if anyone has any last minute questions before we wrap up, please let us know. And Elena, thank you so much for uh, just showing us. And I think for me, 
I've learned a lot. Like there's a lot that I'm going to go back. I think the biggest things for me, I love the drop shadow tips. Um, I think yes. that was something that I did, wasn't aware of before. What you just showed us, um, how to fixing hair and things of that nature and making it more realistic. That was beautiful. And then I think it's really, really big for um, me to learn how to, I always, I do a lot of my editing in Photoshop. Yeah. I used to use Lightroom back, you know, when I started, I still utilize it now, but I do a lot of my editing in Photoshop. But sometimes when I have batch photos, I'm like, I don't want to do each individual yeah. color grading when it's going to be similar. So that tip yeah. about it's, creating the yeah. light. And how did you, how did you learn? Was it just experimenting again or did you? Well, you, you, yeah, no, that one I had to actually look it up because I knew how to do it in camera raw, but I didn't mm -hmm. know that it could be transferred to Lightroom. So when I got Photoshop 2022, I kind of Googled in Photoshop 2022. <laughs> how can i put cube files we in love it Lightroom, right yeah and it it kind of showed a, a different uh sort of technique that was mm -hmm. more involved and i'm like I, I tried a couple of things and then with the out did you notice with the out option if you have that press like i showed you with the overlay in the mask mm -hmm. kind of reveals new yeah things. yeah oh so that's great use that we, that we, Option. We definitely should learn to use that more often. Yes. I am going to definitely be playing Option. around for sure. And the other thing that I taught you guys that I think was pretty cool was that uh, soft light technique of, yes. like, uh, you know, making, uh, you know, the skin really pearly. Yes, right? yes. So make That's sure you guys watch the um, replay of this live. And we also had Sam that dropped the clickable link to your LUT as well. That way everyone can go ahead and download that um, that link as well, or download the LUT, excuse me. So we actually are at our time. <laughs> so thank you so much for being with us today and for helping us and just teaching us so much and all of the detail that you went through. Make sure that you guys stick around for the Illustrator Creative Challenges with Claudie from Print My Soul, immediately followed by day two of brand with Liz Mosley. So thank y'all so much. I can't wait thank to see y'all next time. Elena, thank you so much again for your You're time. You're very welcome. Thank awesome. you. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye guys.